This is the Night Wolf howling at you. And today we're going to take a look at the Masterverse, Masters of the Universe, New Eternia, He-Man figure. This one, I believe, was part of the third wave of the Masterverse figures. And it gave us a look at a kind of new variation on Motu, which sadly they haven't really done much with since then. Uh, they did do a comic book for Masterverse a couple of years ago, but it just ended up being like a multiverse thing. Whereupon it would have been nice if they stuck with the new Eternia storyline and just did that. We get some nice artwork here on the side of this barbarian-esque He-Man. And of course on the back we see him fighting a bunch of creatures, including the Grinch apparently. Uh, these designs, original designs inspired by classic concepts. So some of the ideas that came out that they had before we ended up with our vintage Motu designs. He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. The most powerful man in the universe explores the world of Eternia, seeking to stop the sinister Skeletor from forging the Scimitar of Chaos. He can feel the twilight of the world coming. He can feel it in his bones. He must find the megalomaniac madman and put an end to his havoc once and for all. The fate of the universe demands it. Now, come on, doesn't that actually sound like a pretty good storyline? I want to know more about that story. Not, you know, forget about Revelations, Revolution, or whatever else is coming out. Forget about this whole multiverse thing that they kind of play with now. Let's just... Let's just focus on that story, because that one seems like the most interesting one that they have going right now. We get our standard gray rocky background. Kind of boring, but same time. I kind of like it. That's that's gonna have to be uh, <laughs> that that's gonna have to be heated up and um, uh, melted back into position. That's one of the problems with like the pose poses inside the packaging. Sometimes if the if it's in there for so long, the plastic warps. So yeah, we'll we'll dunk him in hot water at some point after this and uh, give him an opportunity to. Uh, not look like he's got a boner. So anyway, actually, let's go ahead and do that right now. So yeah, his loincloth sits better right now. I just went ahead and soaked him in hot water for about a minute, then ran him through some cold water to keep it down in place. Um, I'm sure most collectors already know about those tricks, so. If you don't, well, now you know. I might have to do some of that live at some point. Anyway, so our He-Man here comes with a punching fist already in place. A grabbing hand over on this side. We get another grabbing hand that can be replaced on his places, uh, punching hand. And we get the slapping hand as well, even though he has no shield to go with it. Which again, I'm not a fan of this hand for shields in the first place. Although I guess if you really wanted to, you could also, if there's enough space there, you could have him hold a cigarette if you got one of those little toy cigarettes from say a Sanji figure from One Piece. He also comes with a battle axe. And I am not sure if this is the same one that comes with the 40th anniversary Masterverse He-Man or if this is a different sculpt. Uh, it's possible that it could be used for both. He's got his own unique power sword, which I probably should have gone ahead and soaked that in hot water too while I was doing it. But uh, I'm not going to pause this video again to do that right now. That's one of the things that's been kind of nice too with the Masterverse line is that they've been doing variations on the Power Sword to go with it. 
He comes with a dagger, which we will be used as kind of a boot dagger as he's got a sheath here specifically for it. And of course, we get a second non-helmeted head. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our figure himself though at the moment. Articulation wise, he's got the ball joint in the neck. Whoops. With the little bit of a hinge here to give you a little extra range of motion. His head pops off really easy, but here we go. Pretty nicely detailed. Uh, you can definitely see the eyes are uh, well painted. And he doesn't have derpy eyes. Or eye wonk, I guess is the term people usually use, at least in the dowel collector community. Uh, the helmet does not come off, which is why we have the second head here. All right, so he's got, of course, the up and down. No butterfly joint. Can spin around. Surprisingly, the shoulder pauldrons are not actually really getting in the way too, too badly, but unless you're trying to go all the way up like that. Um, bicep cut. Double jointed elbow. For your pleasure. We have a wrist swivel and the in and out hinge. And his hand came off really easy. Though I suspect that has more to do with me having heated him up recently than anything else. Let's go ahead and swap that out for a gripping hand. He's got the boob cut. That allows him to spin around on the ball joint. He's got a waist swivel. He can kick up. And he can kick back. And the little cut in his loincloth does allow for a little extra range of motion movement that we wouldn't get with uh, if it didn't have it. We've got a thigh cut for a swivel, the double jointed knee, which is moving like butter. And we of course have the boot cut as well as a hinge at the ankle and the ability to swing it all around. His uh, little dagger can go into his hand here. Like that, if you want. So that if he gets into a knife fight, he can kick some butt. And we can also put that in the little sheath on his leg. And you'll notice here, uh, even the fur is designed to get to not be in the way of the knife going down there. Also making it look kind of weird when it's not in place. But... That's a whole different thing, right? The power sword, as always. Well, maybe not as always. We can stick that into a hand. And he can raise it up. And Mattel still doesn't really give us a hand that is designed specifically to raise the power sword above his head. Like, ooh. That head, that, that ball joint is really loose. I think this is maybe the closest I've gotten to have it raised up like we traditionally see He-Man do in the cartoons. So that's actually not too bad. I know uh, Classics actually gave us one He-Man that had a hand that was specifically made to try to raise it straight above his head. And I can't remember which figure that was. But it was also the only figure they had done that with. His sword can also stow on his back, like so. And we cannot forget his axe, especially since he's a barbarian in this in this uh, story arc.
uh, this figure like this actually looks pretty nice. I mean, as far as coming up with a new uh, storyline for it, I think this would have been a good choice to go with. Uh, I would really like to see more new Eternia stuff done. And it looks like his wrist is about to fall out. <laughs> Okay, now, the added feature of this figure is, of course, if you want to try to make him look more like a vintage He-Man, although not perfectly, of course, you can remove his harness. Somehow. Oh, that is really on there. This sword also opens, uh, also functions as a can opener for his harness. But the shoulder pauldrons can be taken off his harness. And, uh, Theoretically, you can get the harness back on. I am not going to fully put that back in position because when it comes to how I'm going to display this one, it's going to be as the Barbarian He-Man. And I don't want to have to fight with that again. Although, unfortunately, this also, without the shoulder pauldrons, it is a bit looser of a harness than it is with them. Because they didn't, they should have given us a, like a couple more of these bumps here to allow you to pull that in a little bit further. But this is what gives us our look of being more like, uh, more like the previous He-Man figures. And actually, it's kind of close to the first um, one that Mondo put out because that one also had a leather loincloth instead of a furry one. So overall, I mean, we've had a different design for his crest. It's not the Iron Cross. It's uh, some variation of it. Uh, other than that, you know, the furry loincloth, or the Leather loin cloth does match up with his um, gauntlet as well. And I believe this is a unique gauntlet in the line. I don't think I've seen that on any other figure. But I also haven't opened up a lot of Masterverse figures yet either. This, I believe, has been used on multiple figures, though, like Triclops, which, funny story, after I did that review for Triclops... I found his bracer on the ground and I couldn't figure out where it had come from. Like I set it aside. I'm like, I know I, this looks familiar and I can't figure it out. And then when I went to edit the video for Triclops, I saw the, uh, I saw his arm like, Oh, that's where it goes. So anyway, let's go ahead and put his shoulder pauldrons back on. Oh, this is definitely a nice figure for the line. I wonder, Okay, this is for the right side, and then this one must be for the left side, because there's a little mark right around there that you probably can't see. I do really appreciate when they mark stuff, though, for the proper sides. Now let's see how difficult it is to actually get this back in place. I feel like I need a pair of pliers. Okay. Future tip. Have pliers with you when you go to do the uh, Masterverse ones. Although, honestly, something I want to note with these as well is that 
Human and Skeletor both have the, the dual functionality really well done here. And they come with a lot of extra equipment in order to give you the different looks, right? And these were at the basic standard Masterverse size. Since then, um, we don't get quite as much with the new Eternia figures. Uh, Manny Faces just gave us a an extra set of heads. No extra weapons. I don't even think he came in with any extra hands. Well, no, he did. I think they all come with extra hands. But um, if you want really deluxe equipment, why or extra equipment now, or any real extra equipment, it basically has to be the um, the deluxe size. And uh, that's kind of sad. Mecha Neck might be the closest. No, not even. Now that I think about it, because I mean, the one thing about the new Eternia Mechanic coming out that I've seen the pictures of, he uh, he just has like a really nice extended and uh, articulated long neck, but he doesn't actually come with any extra equipment outside of his standard gear. Then, and I do kind of like when they give us different heads for the new Eternia look. So that is our Barbarian He-Man for New Eternia. I really do hope that they do decide to give us some actual comic books that are written specifically for that storyline and not just the multiverse garbage they gave us with the Masterverse comic. That comic had been so disappointing to me, it's not even funny. And I would really like to see them give us, even if they put it as New Eternia or give us the 2000X version. I want to see the Sorceress from the 2000 cartoon. She has not gotten an actual action figure yet, and she needs one. She is probably what I would consider to be the most beautiful version of the Sorceress ever designed, and it is a tragedy and a crime that she has not been made into a figure yet. So anyway, let me know what you think. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and do you want to see the 2000 version of the Sorceress made into a figure? I hope so. Peace and love. Oh, and just something else to note real quick. They do actually show him with a shield in the artwork. Also looks like he's got a 5 o'clock shadow. Um, but again, he doesn't actually come with a shield, which is just kind of sad, really. Uh, also, you know, when I talked about the ball joint, probably should have mentioned that, in this case, uh, the shoulder pauldrons do kind of add enough height to his shoulders that when you go to turn his head, it hinders to the point of actually causing the head to pop off of the, the neck. Just something I thought of as I was uh, finishing up.